here, this, this depression. Okay, if we go just about a, uh, a centimeter back from his uh, epicanthus here, there's going to be a little, uh, our fingers fall into this depression. That's where the greater wing is of the sphenoid. And the pink, your pinky has to be on the um, occiput. In order for us to tell that picture that I'm looking at up there, um, Phil, could you give me my, my uh, pointer, please? Thanks, Alfred. In order for us to do this picture, okay, I need to have a finger here and a finger here. Don't worry about the fingers in between. If you have this book, and it's a very, very popular book, um, it's from, it's from uh, Gayen called, uh, called something. <laughs> but uh, it's a very popular cranial book, so I'm sure many of you have it, where these pictures come from that I scanned. He shows an arrow here also going down, and that's incorrect. Okay, a lot of Belgian French osteopaths have some things backwards. Atlas. Atlas of cranial movement or something. Cranial manipulative. Some, something, but it's, it's a very popular book. They have um, a Chinese translation back. Okay. Um, that does not surprise and me. Original. That does not surprise me. So, um, you know, they show arrows here and they show all kinds of crazy things. Um, the, this is what you need to know is that this, this motion is what we're all describing. People who do craniosacral, who've gone through Upledger Institute or for, through any other institutes, osteopathic uh, people are all believing this, that the base of the occiput, the base of the sphenoid, they're all agreeing that this rises up and falls, rises, falls, rises, falls, and that everything else is moving because of that. And in this course this weekend, we're talking about the vault, which is everything that contains the brain. So what contains the brain? Frontal, uh, sphenoid, temporal, parietal, occipital bone. So for me to, to tell how is flexion going, am I feeling a good, uh, a full amplitude? I need this finger and I need this finger. When you watch me do it, you're going to see me do it like this. And those of you with smaller hands, you're going to do it like this. Because if you have a small hand, and I think I know Peter well enough to say he has a rather large cranium. <laughs> okay, because there's so much no because there's so much knowledge in here, it can't be contained. Is that is that okay? <laughs> For me to say that? Yeah, it's a it's a containment issue. Okay, so I have big hands, but I am much more comfortable just doing this with my thumbs. But if you're Connie's size and and she tries to do it this way, the fingers might not might not reach. So if you're here and you can't reach back to the occiput. You can get something, but you can't tell how occiput and sphenoid are moving together. So, so uh, for those of you who are just starting out and are not used to feeling this rhythm, this is the motion that we're feeling, and it's not as much as I'm doing right now. I'm making this gross. Um, it's not something that you visualize. I think the sensation that many people feel when they first start feeling it is this. It feels like the head gets bigger and the head gets smaller, okay? Now that can't be happening. Why can't that be happening, Jason? I'm sad that you were speechless after my whole day of talking yesterday and you cannot tell me that. Well, the, the, the brain doesn't like an environment that's really changing, okay? So if the brain were, were actually getting bigger, were actually getting smaller, which would be pressure stat model, if that actually were happening, it could happen, but it would have to be a very, the brain doesn't like pressures changed on it. The more likely thing would be that the brain is just reorienting and changing, that, that its volume is not changing dramatically. And our cranial theory that everyone subscribes to is that the falx cerebri is contracting on the inside, okay, and it's actually closing this diameter be, between and you're going to see that you're going to hear this again from me through this weekend, so it won't be the only time. But between nasion and opistion, that diameter or that um, that diameter is contracting, so that that contraction pulls in pulls the frontal bone this way from Christogali, so the frontal bone comes out and it reorients. So if that diameter actually contracts, then this has to widen a little bit with external rotation, which is what we will see later on today. So there's not a, a change in the overall volume of the skull so much as there is a reorientation. And then 
extension will be the opposite of that. So for a variety of reasons, I think you will feel something that becomes larger and something that becomes smaller. If you feel something and it's slow, then you're feeling it. The first step is just to feel it. So right now what I want to do is get everyone on the table and I just want to do um, hand position either with thumbs and fingers here or, or this way. If your thumbs are up here, you can put them together, you can lay them on his head, just don't press on his head. There are times when I press and push in, on sutures and all that, not in this weekend that we're going to do, but with, um, with children, uh, there are times where I use forces on the skull that are more significant. This is more of a contouring force. I'm not trying to squeeze or orange juice here out of his head. I'm just trying to feel the shape of the orange. And your, your hand needs to be relaxed. So a lot of what I might do, or Alfred or Victor might do, is just come around, if I see that your hands are tense, is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pet your hands like you would a puppy, because I want you to relax. If you're tense, the only thing that you're gonna feel is your own tension. And tension, from what I've read about in medical books, is a bad thing. I've experienced it only several times in my life. <laughs> well, one event that lasted 22 years, That's right. That's but um, <laughs> not, in Hong Kong. not in Hong Kong. <laughs> yes, thank God. So um, we're going to come, Alfred and Victor and I, we're going to come around and help you. Um, if you're, there's something you're not understanding, okay, please, don't be silent and think that I have powers of ESP. I don't. Okay, I'm very good at cranial. I'm very bad at reading your mind and what you're thinking. 